GAE 182 English Communication Skills and Irrigandi National Open University. School of Humanities. Block. 1 UNDERSTANDING Communication Course Introduction 3. Block Introduction 4. Unit 1. The Process of Communication 5. E G A E 182 English Communication Skills and Irrigandi National Open University. School of Humanities. Block. 1 UNDERSTANDING Communication Course Introduction 3. Block Introduction 4. Unit 1. The Process of Communication 5. Unit 2. The Globalization of Communication. EGAE 182 English Communication Skills and Irrigandi National Open University. School of Humanities. Block. 1 UNDERSTANDING Communication Course Introduction 3. Block Introduction 4. Unit 1. The Process of Communication 5. Unit 2. The Globalization of Communication. The Global Village 26. Unit 3. Verbal and Nonverbal Communication 40. Expert Committee Prof. Balaji Ranganathan, Professor Romy Kabatra. Gujarat Central University and Irrigandi University. Gandhinagar, Gujarat Mirpur, Rawari. Dr. Anand Prakash Reed, Dr. Hema Raghavan Reed. Formerly at Hansraj College, formerly at Gandhi College. University of Delhi, University of Delhi. Dr. Rajnish Kumar Mishra, Dr. Richard Bajaj. Special Center for Sanskrit Studies, Hindu College. JNU, New Delhi, University of Delhi. Dr. Pail Nakpal. IGNOU Faculty, English. Janki Devi College. University of Delhi. Professor. Anju S. Gupta. Professor. Neera Singh. Professor. Manati Matha. Professor. Nandini Sahu. Professor. Ramod Kumar. Dr. Pemmer Eden Sandup. Mos Marijula Rashmi Kindo. Dr. Malati A. BLCOK Preparation Course Writer Content and Language Editing. Professor. R. Amrita Valley Unit 2 Professor. Anju Sargal Gupta. Retired. EFLU. Hyderabad School of Humanities. Ignoma. GSRK Babu Rao. Unit 3 Course Coordinator. EFLU. Hyderabad Professor. Anju Sargal Gupta. School of Humanities. IGNOUPRINT Production MR. CN Pandey. Secretarial Assistance. Section Officer Publication. Ms. Pranata Lingwal. Paso. IGNOU. New Delhi. August 2019. Indira Gandhi National Open University. 2019. ISBN. All rights reserved. No part of this work may be reproduced in any form by mimeograph. Or any other means, without permission in writing from the Indira Gandhi National Open. University. Further information on Indira Gandhi National Open University courses may be obtained. From the University's Office of Maidan Gari. New Delhi minus 110,068 or visit University's web. Site web links. Printed and published on behalf of the Indira Gandhi National Open University, New Delhi. By Professor. Shatrat Nakumar, Director, School of Humanities. Laser typeset by, Tessa Media and Computers, C206, AFE2, Okra, New Delhi. Printed at. Course introduction and good skill to know. It's the art of good communication. It's exchanging one's thoughts and ideas. And it results in clarification. We'll need to listen closely. And look at the one who speaks. He might miss something important. And catching up might take weeks. We'll need to speak clearly. And use a proper tone. You might need to speak up. Or you might be on the phone. If you watch and observe closely, you'll pick up on non-verbal clues. You'll soon begin to understand. And respect others' point of view. So if you want some good advice, then you should take it from me. When you have good communication, in the dark you'll no longer be. Web links. Com 2013-02, poem on. Communication. HTML. Welcome to the course English Communication Skills. This course is a four. Credits and has three blocks and 11 units. Please read all the units carefully and attempt all the check your progress activities diligently. If you have any problems, consult your academic counselor at the study center. We begin with a bit of theory in block one understanding communication. Here, we will dwell on the process of communication, communication in globalized communities and nonverbal communication. In block two, listening and speaking in informal and formal contexts, the emphasis is on the speaking and listening skills in both informal and formal situations. The units will help you not only in personal encounters, but in your university and at the workplace. In block three, reading and writing skills, we concentrate on reading, vocabulary, Enhancement and writing skill. We hope that you will benefit from the course. Communication block introduction and this block understanding communication, we give you some theoretical insights into the communication process. Unit one, the process of communication. Deals with topics such as what is communication, the process of communication. Various to communications, the difference between written and spoken. Communication. We then describe at some length the speech act, i.e. conversation. In unit two, the globalization of communication, a global village, we briefly describe the story of communication from ancient times to the modern era. We also discuss how language and new technologies interact harmoniously with each other. Nonverbal communication is a very important factor in the communication process. This may be through body language and even signs, symbols, and graphs. Our purpose in Unit 3 is to holistically understand the communication process so that you will be able to interact meaningfully in your life. Acknowledgement of the material, pictures, and passages we have used is purely for educational purposes. Every effort has been made to trace the copyright holders of material reproduced in this book. Should any infringement have occurred, the publishers and editors apologize and will be pleased to make the necessary corrections in future editions of this book. Unit 2 and 3 have been taken from BEGE 103 which was previously edited and coordinated by Professor Emir Bhusan Sharma, formerly IGNOU. Unit 1, the process update process of communication, communication structure 1.0 objectives. 1.1 introduction, what is communication? 1.2, the process of communication 1.3, barriers to communication 1.4, different types of communication 1.5, written versus oral communication 1.6, different types of face-to-face -face interactions. 1.7, characteristics and conventions of conversation 1.8, difference between conversation and other speech events. 1.9, let us sum up. 1.10 suggested readings. 1.11 answers. 1.0 objectives. The aim of this unit is to tell you 
Process and elements of communication. Different types of communication. Barriers to communication. Difference between written and spoken communication. After you complete the unit, you should shift your attention from English as a subject of knowledge to English as a skill that you can train yourself to use. 1.1 Introduction. What is communication? We all engage in communication with others right from our birth. When we interact with others, we are communicating with them. Right now I am communication communicating with you through this unit and while you are reading it, you too are in fact communicating with me through this text. It is often said that we live in an age of communication, characterized by speed, efficiency, and the ability to transcend physical or geographical limitations. But what does it mean to communicate? The dictionary definition is to exchange thoughts or make known information or feelings by speech, writing or other means to transmit. Communication is more than just messaging or swapping information. It involves not just words, but the use of all our senses with face to face dialogue, our facial expression, tone, body language, ability to listen with patience or contribute to the conveying messages and information between people. For example, the written word, whether in books and magazines, emails or text can convey more than just the writing. It can inspire, elevate and encourage. If that is the intention of the writer, it can also confuse and exasperate if we are not careful. Lintras, in a recent book on punctuation, pointed out how easily the meaning of the written word can be altered just by rearranging the punctuation. She invites us to compare the following two sentences. A woman without her man is nothing, and a woman without her man is nothing. As human beings, we have the ability to express ourselves and share our thoughts and feelings in many ways. We can live in isolation, never communicating with another person, but that would not create value. We can keep feelings to ourselves or we can share them. Each person has his or her unique view of things, and each perspective is valuable. Through sharing these individual ideas or views with each other, global solutions may be found. Someone may share an idea that the other person may not have even considered. These differing views can be compared to a jigsaw puzzle where each person has their own piece, and when the pieces fit together, the full picture emerges. And a solution is found that may not have been considered previously. Certainly. Increased communication that uses technology can be enormously valuable. Being able to share information quickly between people has meant that a disaster in one part of the world can be responded to in another. It has led to the fall of corrupt governments as people have been able to unite in challenging authoritarian regimes. People in remote areas fighting injustice have linked up with people on the other side of the world who can support their cause. As with everything, new technologies such as email and text messaging have the potential to be positive or negative. Six of don't you see the value of communication? 1.2 The process of communication process of communication following figure gives a simple model of the process of communication. Check your progress one. Look at the figure given above and try to answer the following questions. One, at least how many persons do you need for communication to take place? Two, can two people communicate if they do not share the same language? Three, if your answer to Q2 above is yes, then explain how they will communicate. Four, person sitting with his eyes closed says he is communicating with God. Do you think it is an example of communication? Give reasons for your answer. Five, a person was lost in his thoughts with his eyes closed. When asked, he said that he was communicating with self. Would you term it as communication? Discuss with others in your study center. Elements of communication. If we look at the figure given above, we can derive the elements of communication. As follows. One communication involves at least two persons, her, the addresser, and B, the addressee. Two, the topic, the contents of the message. Three, the channel, the medium through which the message travels, e.g. letter, telephone, email, etc. Four, the code, the language of the message, e.g. English, French, Hindi, etc. Five, the message form, the selection of particular grammar and lexical choices of the message. Six, the setting, the social and physical setting. Check your progress, too. Look at the figure once again. Can you write a paragraph now explaining the process of communication? Communication. The role of the decoder. The process of decoding by the addressee is not passive as some people think. His the role is an active one. Language, it is said, does not have meaning. It has potential for meaning and it is the decoder who is actively engaged in making meaning on the basis of his her background knowledge in the context of communication, i.e. the knowledge of the subject, topic, addresser, addressee. Relationship, knowledge of the code, language used, the physical and social context, etc. Let us consider the following utterance. Mr. Gupta is not coming. The literal meaning of the sentence is not difficult. It is quite clear, but do we know what the speaker wants to convey? Is it a statement for our information? Is it a warning for the hearer? We can understand this text only if we know what the context is, i.e. who is the addresser, whom is S.T. addressing, when, where, and in what context. Suppose the addresser is the managing director, M.D., of the company, and the addressee is his secretary. The M.D. utters these words on, arriving in his office and going through a fax message. Mr. Gupta is a consultant with the foreign collaborators of the company, and he was due to arrive that day for a meeting with the M.D. and other officials of the company. If we possess this background knowledge, we will be able to understand the meaning of the sentence uttered by the M.D. This sentence can now be called an utterance in this context. The secretary can interpret the utterance to mean the meeting will have to be cancelled and the officials informed accordingly. Arrangements such as sending the car to the airport, hotel reservation, etc. If any, made for Mr. Gupta, will have to be cancelled, etc. etc. When we make an utterance, we always do something. We use language to perform some function, e.g. to inform, warn, promise, persuade, etc. And the hearer or the reader can derive the meaning of the utterance only through actively processing the utterance in the context in which it is made. Check your progress 3. Can you think of some of the functions of language? One can meter, inform, someone, auto, warn, them. Think of some more functions and compare your list with that drawn up by others at your study center. 8. Macro functions of communication. The process of the macro functions of communication are listed below. Communication 1. The emotive function to communicate the inner states and emotions, e.g. Oh no. 
Two, the directive function, seeking to affect the behavior of others, e.g. close. The door, please. Three, the static function, opening the channel or checking that it is working. E.g. hello, is it Thomas Cook? Or can you hear me, Mrs. Gupta? Four, the poetic function, the particular form chosen is the essence of the message. This refers to the aesthetic function of language. Five, the referential function, to carry information. Six, the metalinguistic function, focusing attention on the code itself, e.g. The use of both will or shall is correct in modern usage. Seven, the contextual function, creating a particular kind of context, e.g. write. Let's start the meeting now. Check your progress for which of these functions are often performed in workplace situations. If examples to support your answer. 1.3 barriers to communication, it is said the communication can never be 100% complete. Many factors are involved in the process of communication and something can always go wrong with one or more of these. From your own experience, make a list of some of the factors that can impede communication. Let us now consider some of these barriers. A. Code, i.e. the addresser and the addressee may not share the same language between them. The addresser is speaking in French and the addressee does not know French. B. Vocabulary, the market declined under persistent bear hammering. 1. Communication ho is not familiar with the vocabulary of the stock market may not understand what is meant. C. Concept, technical and subject specific concepts may not be understood by all. For example, the black hole is simple language, yet the concept may not be understood by many. C. Background knowledge and shared assumptions, e.g. a Victorian style. Mansion may not be understood by those living outside England. E. Pronunciation, intonation, accent and stress in spoken language sometimes may not be understood. F. Culture specific communication may cause misunderstanding. G. Physical environment, noise and other environmental disturbances or even Physical distance between the address and the addressee can impede effective communication. H. Effective factors, personal factors e.g. anxiety, fear, attitude, motivation, beliefs, values, lack of mutual trust, lack of time or pressure of work, lack of attention, and personal rivalries. All these factors impede communication. Check your progress 5. How can the barriers to communication be removed? Discuss with others in your group or class. 1.4 different types of communication communication may be classified into several categories on a following basis. Expression, written, oral, and gestural. Flow, internal, vertical, and horizontal, and external. Relationship, formal and informal. Various media of expression, written, oral and gestural. Communication can be achieved through various media, such as writing, speech, the process of gestures and actions. One can use written words or draw pictures or one can use communication speech sounds. Speech is primary, writing secondary, that is, speech came first. And the writing system was developed later on. There may still be some languages which are spoken but not written. In fact, several of the tribal languages do not have any script. Deaf and dumb people use actions and gestures in order to communicate with each other. This is also a form of communication and known. As sign language, the visually challenged read and write using Braille. In the workplace, communicating in writing or via email is the most popular form of communication. It can take various forms such as letters, circulars, office, memorandums, newsletter, brochures, bulletins, reports, manuals, house journals, magazines, etc. You are already familiar with some of these. This does not mean that oral communication is not used in workplace transactions. Speech is also used and quite often. It takes the form of face-to-face -face interaction. Telephone conversations, lectures and talks, meetings and discussions, etc. Expression through body language is known as gestural communication. Who? is not familiar with the nodding of the head from side to side to say, no, or up, and down to convey, yes. Parents often use this means of communication with their children if they tend to be naughty in the presence of guests and it is often used in workplace situations as well in similar circumstances or when verbal communication is impossible e.g. in the factory where the noise of machinery makes verbal communication difficult. Check your progress 6. Can you think of a situation when gestural communication would be more effective than oral communication? What kind of messages can be communicated through gestures? Give some example from your own experience. Pictures, charts, diagrams are also used either on their own or in combination with written or oral communication for greater effect and better understanding. Business houses make use of them in their illustrated catalogs and brochures meant to promote their product. Downward, upward and horizontal communication. Companies have to communicate with outside agencies and other companies. Government and private bodies, newspapers, advertisers, manufacturers of machinery, builders, suppliers of goods and services, clients and customers, etc. But there is also the need to communicate within the company itself, e.g. Communication between a superior and a subordinate, i.e. from higher to lower level. Levels of authority. This is an example of downward communication. There are Communication also occasions when communication flows from a subordinate or subordinates to a higher authority. It may be a report, suggestion, opinion, or a charter of demands from the workers. We call this upward communication. Both these are forms of vertical communication. Communication between offices working at the same level of management is called horizontal or lateral communication, e.g. interaction between manager, production, and manager, marketing. It involves exchange of ideas, information, opinions or seeking clarifications, etc. between personnel of the same rank, formal and informal communication. In the workplace, these two terms are used in a slightly different sense than what we generally understand by them. Communication done through the chain. The command is known as formal communication. It involves the transmission of official message in the formal organization structure. Such communication is planned and established by management and clearly indicates the hierarchical relationships involved in these generally are in writing e.g. orders, decisions, instructions, etc. Informal communication does not flow through the official channels of communication. It involves the spontaneous expression of reactions and ideas and is usually done orally. Hence it may carry incomplete or incorrect information. The words formal and informal are used to indicate change in form and language. The communication according to change in relationship between the addresser and the addressee in the context of situation. For example, you will use informal language while talking to your brother at home.
But if your brother also happens to be your boss in office and a formal meeting is going on in office, you will address him in a different way, i.e. informal style. 1.5 written versus oral communication when we speak of language as a tool for communication, we mean both spoken and written forms of the language. Both these modes can be used for communication while they perform the same functions, their form and manner. Of use differ in many respects. For example, one makes use of sounds, other symbols, the speaker has available to him, her, the full range of voice quality, effects, as well as facial expressions, postural and gestural systems, but these are linguistic features are denied to the writer. The writer, on the other hand, has 12 typographical variety at his disposal. The speaker is face to face with hearer. While the writer writes for an absent reader who may also be far away in space. The process of and time. Communication as different features have their own advantages and disadvantages. In oral communication, the speaker being face to face with the hearer can monitor and match the reactions of the hearer. At the same time, ST can simultaneously plan his the next utterance and fit it in the overall pattern of what ST wants to say. ST must keep on talking during the period allotted to him, her. ST must decide when to take his her turn, how to interrupt his her interlocutor, how to hand over the turn. In fact, ST must be in command of all the conversational skills. ST has certain advantages as well. ST can observe his her interlocutor and, if necessary, modify what ST is saying. Oral communication is quicker, more economical and more effective than written communication. Doubts and misunderstandings can be cleared on the spot as immediate reaction and response is available. There are variations in spoken language and also in the way it is delivered. These can be on account of geographical or social and cultural differences. There are dialectical differences, accent differences, and also differences in the use of paralinguistic features and body language. Speech is less organized than written language. It contains many incomplete sentences. Often it contains simply sequences of phrases. These features may easily create misunderstandings. Oral communication is less reliable because it is not available in future. It is also affected by the attitudes and personality, self-interest, beliefs, values, and prejudices of the sender as well as the receiver and also the time and circumstances of the communication. Oral communication is also not suitable for lengthy messages to be communicated to distant and widely scattered people. Similarly, the written mode gives the writer certain advantages as well as disadvantages over the speaker. Since the writer is writing for an absent reader, ST may look over, reflect, and edit what ST has already written with no fear of being interrupted by his her interlocutor. ST can take his her own time in choosing a particular word, even looking it up in the dictionary, if necessary. Reorder what ST has written, and even change his her mind about what ST has to say. ST is under no pressure to keep on writing. She can even destroy what ST has written and throw it into the dustbin without fear of offending the reader. But the writer has disadvantages too, ST has no access to immediate feedback and simply has to imagine the reader's reactions. This non-reciprocal nature of written communication makes it more difficult to learn. Written communication ensures the transmission of information in a manner, and there is little risk of unauthorized alteration in the message. Since it is put in black and white, it provides a permanent record for future reference. Written communication tends to be complete, precise, and unambiguous. The message can be repeated at regular intervals and lengthy messages can be sent to widely scattered readers. But written communication is time-consuming, expensive and rigid, and it becomes difficult to maintain secrecy. At the workplace, face-to-face -face and telephone communications are generally confirmed in writing by post or email, particularly when the communication is with the world outside. Why do you think is it necessary to do so? Discuss with friends or mates at the study center the comparative advantages and disadvantages of the telephone mode of communication over face-to-face. -face. Communication interaction. Check your progress 7. 1. Which mode of communication would you adopt in the following cases? A. The message is very urgent. B. The message is important and lengthy. C. The message sent should be available in the records. D. The information is to be sent to all employees in different branches. E. You have to consult your boss, who is out of town, urgently and take a quick decision. 2. You are the marketing manager of a firm. You want to hire a sales supervisor. Which form of communication would you use to communicate your requirement to the manager personnel? Would you prefer to talk to him personally, over the phone, write an email or memo? Give reasons for your answer. 1.6 different types of face-to-face -face interactions Brown and Yule 1983 use two terms to describe the major functions of language. The function of language where the transfer of information is involved is called transactional, and the function involved in expressing social relations and personal attitudes is called interactional. 1. Uh, uh, there's no message for you, transactional. B. Okay. B. Uh, how are you? Interactional. B. Fine. Thank you. In the world of business, one has to make use of language for performing both of the process of these functions. In business transactions, different situations may arise when communication owned has to use language for different types of face-to-face -face interactions. 1. Conversation for establishing social contact, performing various functions such as introducing oneself and others, making inquiries, giving and seeking information, giving instructions, reporting conversations, giving the company's profile, describing persons, places and processes, developing relationships, getting people to do things, offering help, seeking help, apologizing, persuading, elaborating, arguing a point, explaining a situation, comparing two products, negotiating business deals, asking for and giving advice, etc. 2. Participating in discussions. 3. Taking part in conducting meetings and interviews. 4. Lecturing. 5. Demonstrating companies' products. 6. Talking about where you work. Describing simple and everyday operations. Describing work and business. Operations. Describing office working conditions. Consulting and reporting to superiors. Asking for and giving advice. Talking about problems at work, etc. Most of these encounters will be transactional while some of these will be interactional. Conversation. You are already aware of social interaction at the workplace, i.e. meeting and greeting people in business and developing a conversation from your Observation. Can you recall derive some rules of face-to-face -face conversation? Do you think there are rules for conversation in every language of the world? Native. 
Speakers learn naturally as part of the growing up in our society and follow those rules in their conversation with other native speakers. Discuss this with others in your study center. Human beings spend a large part of their lives engaging in conversation and for most of us conversation is among our most significant and engrossing activities. We have already described the importance of communication, particularly face to face communication. Researchers from several academic disciplines have looked at conversation as an object of inquiry and come up with fascinating findings. Our understanding of how people conduct conversations have been enriched by observations made by psychologists and linguists, among others. Before we describe the rules of conversation, let us be clear about the term conversation. As Richards and Schmidt point out, the term conversation is used somewhat ambiguously in current literature. It is used sometimes to refer to any spoken encounter or interaction and sometimes, more restrictedly, to talk occurring when a small number of participants come together and settle into what they perceive to be a few moments cut off from or carried on to the side of instrumental tasks, a period of idling felt to be an end in itself during which everyone is accorded the right to talk as well as to listen and without reference to a fixed schedule. Everyone is accorded the status of someone whose overall evaluation of the subject matter at hand is to be encouraged and treated with respect. And no final agreement or synthesis is demanded, differences of opinion to be treated as unprejudicial to the continuing relationship of the parties. Goffman 1976. All talk, it is pointed out, is rooted in its surroundings. The conversation in this more restricted sense is not very firmly rooted to the world as other kinds of utterances. The activities which are directly governed by norms for the use of communication speech are term speech events. As speech events, conversations can be contrasted with other types of speech events such as lectures, discussions, interviews, debates and meetings. 1.7 characteristics and conventions of conversations cooperative and politeness principle. Conversation is more than merely the exchange of information. When people take part in conversation, they bring to the conversational process shared. Assumptions and expectations about what conversation is, how conversation develops, and the sort of contribution they are each expected to make. When people engage in conversation, they share common principles of conversation. That lead them to interpret each other's utterances as contributing to the conversation. One of the assumptions we make when we take part in a conversation is that if I ask you a question, whatever you say will somehow be interpreted as constituting an answer to my question. Consider the following example. 2A. Which generator did you buy? B. It is a Honda. Let us now consider the following. 3A. Which generator did you buy? B. You could have killed it. In this latter case, the speaker B does not seem to have followed the principle. Described above and hence the resulting exchange is uninterpretable. The philosopher Grice has described four maxims or principles of cooperative behavior which speakers observe in conversation. These are one maxim of quantity, make your contribution just as informative as required. Two maxim of quality, make your contribution one that is true. Three maxim of relation, make your contribution relevant. Four maxim of manner, avoid obscurity and ambiguity. Be brief and orderly. Conversation is more than a series of exchanges. It consists of exchanges which are initiated and interpreted according to intuitively understood and socially acquired rules and norms of conversational cooperation. These can in turn be manipulated to create a wide range of meanings beyond the level expressed directly by the utterances in the conversation itself. Consider the following. Example. 4A. It is very hot in here. B. I'll open the window. We can infer the meaning of B's response. The room is hot, probably because the process of the windows are closed, so if the window is open, cool, fresh air will come in. Communication and cool the room. B's response is thus quite relevant and interpretable. Check your progress 8. 1. What do you think can be the relationship between A and B? We also know that the rules of conversational implicature dependent on manipulating the four maxims can be used to express sarcasm, irony, criticism, and a range of other types of inferential meaning. Consider the following. Exchange. A. How is the food? B. There is plenty to fill your belly. B is manipulating the maxims of conversational implicature to suggest that the other qualities of the food are not worth mentioning. However, at the workplace the emphasis is on clarity of communication and indirect speech acts and manipulation of maxims are generally avoided. The relevance of Grice's maxims to conversation in a second foreign language is dependent on the degree to which such maxims are universal or language specific. In Indian culture, for example, even during an interview for a job, candidates are very modest while talking about themselves and their achievements. While in the European context the tendency is to display oneself to an extent which an Indian might term boasting or bragging. Adjacency pairs. One way in which meanings are communicated and interpreted in conversation is through the use of what have been called adjacency pairs. Adjacency pairs. Our utterance is produced by two successive speakers such as the second utterance. is identified as related to the first as an expected follow-up. The two form a pair. The first utterance constituting a first pair part and the next utterance constituting a second pair part. Adjacency pair is described as the basic structural unit in conversation. Consider the following examples of adjacency pairs. A. Greeting greeting A. Hi. B. Hi. B. Compliment acceptance A. That's nice dress. B. Thanks. The basic rule of adjacency pair operation is that when a speaker produces a communication recognizable first pair part, S. He should stop talking in the conversational partner should produce a recognizable second pair part. Adjacency pairs thus provide for turn-taking, and also prescribe the type of talking that the next talker can do. Check your progress 9. One supply appropriate adjacency pairs for the following. Summons answer mother, Ramesh. Ramesh, farewell farewell A, okay see you. B, question answer customer, do you have fresh apples? Shopkeeper, for some adjacency pairs, there is much more freedom for conversationalists. Responding to first pair parts, with several options available as second pair. Parts. Complaint A, who took away the keys of my car? Apology B, sorry. Denial B, no, I didn't. It must have been. Surindra. Justify B, I needed them to bring the edit. Back from school. Excuse B, you shouldn't have left them here. Challenge B, so what? Check your progress 10. Produce appropriate second part adjacency pairs are shown in the brackets for the following. Compliment A, that's a nice dress. Acceptance B, agreement B, rejection B, topic shift B, 
Return B. Openings and closings. Conversations. It is pointed out. Do not simply begin and end. The openings end. Closings of conversations and other types of speech events are organized end. Orderly. All transitions from a state of non-talk to talk or from talk to non-talk. Require engineered solutions. Openings and closings are problematic for the native speakers as well and have to be learned like other social behaviors. Four. Non-native speakers, it is an area which needs special attention. Openings and closings are speech event specific. For a formal meeting, four. The process of. Example, there is an initial summons for memo, circular along with the agenda. Communication at C. We will talk about this topic in some detail when we discuss below different types of face-to-face -face interaction. The conversation is quite different from many other speech events in that it has no specified setting, no time or place, no required roles other than persons involved. Though some external roles such as boss secretary may not be shared, no pre-specified agenda, and a quorum of simply two or more, like other speech activities. However, conversations must be opened, and commonly this is done through the use of an adjacency pair such as greeting, greeting, request grant, question answer, or statement responses in the following speech event. A. Good morning. B. Morning. Can I help you? A. I want to see Mr. Binaga. B. Which Mr. Binaga do you want? We two Binagas in this office. A. Mr. Mukul Binaga. He's director finance. B. Do you have an appointment? A. I'm afraid not. B. Let me check if he is free. You are Mr. A. Malhotra. Deepak Malhotra from ABC. Mr. Malhotra takes his seat. After a few minutes in the waiting room. B. I'm sorry he's in a meeting. A. When is the meeting likely to be over? B. No idea. Can I take a message? A. Will you tell him I came to see him? B. I will, certainly. A. Thank you. B. You're welcome. Topic development. Another important dimension of conversational organization is the way topics are selected for discussion within and the strategies used by the speakers to introduce, develop, or change topics within the conversation. Coherent. Conversations respect norms concerning choice of topics, for example, in a business meeting members will take turn to speak only on the items on a agenda notified in advance and from among these only on that item which is being discussed at the moment. Topics may develop in a recognizable structure as, for example, the language of buying and selling, court trial, doctor and patient conversation, etc. Check your progress 11. Write a short conversation between a TV dealer and a customer. The customer bought the TV last month but is having some trouble with the picture and sound. Quality. Discuss in your study center the structure of this conversation in a communication light of the points made above. Turn taking. Conversation by definition involves two or more people. But the distribution of talking among the participants is not merely random. It is governed by turn. Taking norms, conventions which determine who talks, when, and for how long. One who talks too much and does not allow time for others, or one who contributes nothing to the conversation or arouses negative evaluations. Rules for turn taking differ according to the type of speech event. In a Classroom, for example, students generally raise a hand to take a turn to talk. Repairs. The process of conversation involves monitoring to ensure that the intended messages have been communicated and understood. This involves correction. Whenever it is suspected that the message has not been received as intended. The term repair refers to the efforts by the speaker or the hearer to correct trouble. Spots in conversation. Repairs may be initiated by either the speaker or the hearer. Uh, Mr. Malhotra isn't in his office. B. Sorry. Uh, Mr. Malhotra is not in his office at the moment. 1.8 difference between C-O-N-D-E-R-S-A-T-I-O-N-A and the other speech events. Hines uses the term speech event for activities that are directly governed by Norms for the use of speech. As speech events, conversations can be contrasted with other types of speech events such as lectures, discussions, meetings, interviews, debates, etc. We recognize each of these speech events as distinct by virtue of differences in the number of participants who take part in them as well as through differences in the type and amount of talking expected of the participant, the setting, quorum, if any, required, etc. Speech events, like conversations, as shown above, also have identifiable rules for proper beginnings, middles and endings, violations if noticed, are frowned upon. Openings and closings, as already said above, are speech event specific. Four. Many speech events, there is an initial summons, e.g. a memo notice calling for a meeting and participants assemble over time before the occasion actually begins. There may be a specified setting, e.g. hall, classroom, and the persons who the process of assemble are oriented to a specified category members, e.g. members of the communication club, union, students, faculty at a college lecture. Some events, such as a formal meeting, e.g. the annual general body meeting of the company require a specified number of participants before the events may properly be seen as beginning, such as a quorum at a meeting. Some speech events may not begin as soon as the required persons are present. These may require formal markers before the event properly begins. When the audience assemble for a lecture, there may be background noise and conversation. May be in progress at different corners in the room, but the lecture itself have not properly begun until an authorized person uses some sort of attention getter. Saying, right, or okay, it is time to begin, etc. We will be talking about interviews and meetings in subsequent units when we will illustrate in detail how these two specific speech events differ from conversation. Here we propose to consider another feature in which lecture differs from conversation. While talking about the differences between spoken and written modes, we said that one of the differences between these two modes of communication is that writing is an activity that is non-reciprocal in nature. Can you recall what we meant by this term non-reciprocal? Lecture, whether written or spoken from notes, tends to be non-reciprocal in this sense. In other words, there are no adjacency pairs, no turn taking, no immediate verbal feedback as we have in conversation though in the classroom lecture, the teacher might get feedback from expressions on students' faces, raising of hands, uneasy movements, etc. So as he has a necessity to propel the communication on his own, this, however, does not mean the lecture or written discourse is not an interactive process of negotiation. It is interactive, but this interaction is conducted by the speaker himself herself by enacting the roles of speaker as well as of audience. 
Since there is no immediate reaction, FT has to anticipate what is likely to happen and provide for any possible misunderstanding arising from the back of shared knowledge. In the words of Witherton, the act of lecturing is the enactment of an exchange, with the speaker taking on the roles of both the interlocutors. But whereas in spoken discourse conversation, this process of negotiation is typically overt and reciprocal. In lectures and written communication, it is covert and non-reciprocal. Because of the absence of immediate verbal reaction from that is audience, the speaker has a basic problem. ST has a certain message to impart. And ST has to prepare the ground and set up conditions favorable to the reception of such information. ST does this by continually shifting that is function from speaker to hearer and acting the interaction by playing the role of each interlocutor as in the following example. Yesterday I spoke to you about Canada. Today I shall talk about Australia, which happens to be the next topic. Australia is a land of contrast. It is geologically one of the oldest of land masses, yet it ranks as one of the youngest of nations. It is half a world away from Europe, but its people are largely of European descent. And they follow a Western lifestyle. 21. If we look at the above text, we find that the speaker makes an assertion in a communication first sentence and the subsequent sentences are then said to support what ST says in the first sentence as if to answer the question of the listener, how can you say that? Can you give proof? We can write this text as follows. Speaker, Australia is a land of contrasts. Listeners, how can you say that? Can you give some proof? Speaker, it is geologically one of the oldest of land masses, yet it ranks as one of the youngest of nations. Listeners, can you give more examples? Speaker, yes. It is half a world away from Europe, but its people are largely of European descent and they follow a Western lifestyle. A lecture, like written discourse, thus involves non-reciprocal interaction and the result of this is a text. The audience must interpret this text to reconstitute the interaction as it does not reveal the second person's or the audience's reactions which the speaker and the writer anticipates by enacting the other participant's role. It is in this sense that lecturing is covered and non-reciprocal and differs from conversation which is overt and reciprocal. 1.9 let us sum up in this unit we have tried to understand what communication is and defined it as the process of meaningful interaction between two or more persons with a view to arriving at a common meaning and understanding. Communication can be achieved through use of language, written or spoken, and gestures. There are different types of communication and these are used on different occasions. Each of these modes of communication has its own advantages and disadvantages. Communication may involve repeated interactions or negotiations of meaning. And the addresser and the addressee play active roles in this process. Effective communication in business is as important as the blood circulating in the human. Body and hence managers do the best to overcome all barriers to communication. Further, we also describe different types of face-to-face -face interactions, especially conversation, its main features and how to develop it to make it meaningful. We have also described briefly some other types of face-to-face -face interactions and how they differ from each other and from conversation. 1.10 suggested readings. Bauman, R, and J. Scherzer Eds, 1974. Explorations in the Ethnography of Speaking. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. Brown, Gillian and George Yule, 1983. Teaching the Spoken Language. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. Goffman, E, 1976. Replies and Responses Language in Society 5 thirds, 257 to 313. Goody, EM, 1978. Questions and Politeness, Strategies in Social Interaction. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. Sathers, G. Ed. 1979. Everyday Language. Studies in Ethnomethodology. New Process of. York, Irvington. Communication Checkoff, EA 1972A. Notes on Conversational Practice, Formulating Place. In D. Sudno, Ed. Studies in Social Interaction. New York, Free Press. Checkoff, EA 1972B. Sequencing in Conversational Openings in J.J. Gumpers. D. Himes, Eds. Directions in Sociolinguistics, The Ethnography of. Communication. New York, Holt, Reinhardt and Winston. Shagloff, EA 1979. Identification and recognition in telephone conversation. Openings in G. Sarthas 1979. Witherton, HG 1984. Explorations in Applied Linguistics 2. Oxford, Oxford. University Press. 1.11 Answer Check Your Progress 1. 1 2 persons. 2 yes. 3 limited communication is possible through gestures. 4 no. Will not term it as social communication. 5 same as 4. Check your progress 2. On the left is the addresser. S he can choose to write his her message or equally. Well speak it. So we can use the more general word encoder for him her. The encoder has a message. It may be news, an idea, a feeling. S.D. wants to convey this message to somebody. To make this possible, S.D. must first put it into words. I.E.S.D. must encode it. Once it is encoded, it is available outside his her mind. As a text written or spoken, the text is accessible to the mind of another person. Who hears or reads it, that is, who decodes the message the text contains. Once it is decoded, the message enters the mind of the decoder and communication. Takes place. Check your progress 3. Open-ended. Some points given in macro function of communication. Check your progress 4. Open-ended. Check your progress 5. Barriers in communication can be removed by the following. 1. The interlocutors should share the same code language. 2. If the interlocutors speak the same language but different dialects, the dialects should be comprehensible to all. 3. Often effective factors can cause misunderstanding. It is, therefore, important. Communication to dialogue without rivalry or tension and with a sincere motive to listen to one another. 4. Shared knowledge is another important factor for intelligent conversation. Check your progress 6. Open-ended. Check your progress 7. 1. Uh, face to face or telephone. B. Written email attachment. Fax. C. Written email. Written memo. E. Telephone. 2. Open-ended depending on your situation. Preferably a memo should be sent. Reasons. But there should be a record of this communication. E cannot be a letter as it involves communication within the company. Check your progress 8. It can be anything where B would like to oblige A, e.g. guest post, boss secretary, wife, husband, etc. A is evidently superior in hierarchy to B. 
B responds immediately to A's statement. Roy A is a patient and B the concerned caretaker. Check your progress 9. Coming mom. Bye. So long. Yes. Roll 3 boxes only this morning. Here you are. See how fresh. There. Check your progress 10. We have given sample answers. Yours could be different. Thank you. It's quite nice, isn't it? Well, I think it makes me look old. Vanita found it for me. Thanks. I like yours too. Check your progress 11. We have given a sample conversation. Yours could be different. At the showroom of Sony TV Company. Mushtaq Ahmed, excuse me. I bought a Sony TV set from your dealer at Rajit. The process of art market last month. After using it for 10 days, I noticed that the picture was. Communication is clear and there were horizontal lines moving downwards on the screen. After. Another week, the volume control stopped working. Sales manager, why have you come to us so late? Mushtaq Ahmed, I complained to your dealer but he refused to do anything. About it. Sales manager, well, I'm sorry that your T. V. Set have given you trouble so early. It's a bit surprising really, because our products have to undergo strict quality. Control checks before going to the market. Mushtaq Ahmed, so what should I do now? Sales manager, please arrange to send your set to our workshop at 10, sharper. Road, Delhi. We'll attend to the defect. Mushtaq Ahmed, what will the charges be? Sales manager, there will be no charge for the repairs. But, I am afraid we have. To charge for any parts that need to be replaced. Mushtaq Ahmed, thank you. Sales manager, you're welcome. Communication unit to the globalization OFCOMMUNICATION, a global village structure 2.0 objectives. 2.1 introduction 2.2 a global village. 2.3 an arduous journey, just over. A hundred years ago, 2.4 the story of human. Communication of the day in. Our lives. 2.5 communication and social. Change. 2.6 language and the new technologies. 2.7 letter sum up. 2.8 further readings. 2.9 answers. 2.0 objectives this unit will help you to understand the following points. The world is now a global village. There have been an acceleration in communication in the last 100 years. Changes in communication technologies have made globalization possible and indeed inevitable and every revolutionary change in communications technologies results in unprecedented social change. 2.1 introduction have you ever thought what it would be like if you had lived 100 years ago? There would perhaps have been no electric light in your home or village or city. You would have used oil lamps. How would you travel? How would you get news of the world around you? How large would the world around you have been? What technology has done for us is to shrink our world. We travel by air rather than by bullet cart. We have the telephone, the radio and television via Satellite, allowing for instant communication across the globe. We have email and internet. A person who has magically transported from the early 20th century. 26 to the early 21st century would be puzzled and quite lost in our world. In this unit, we shall think about the technology that has changed our world. The globalization of, and about how it has done so. We shall see that in the past 150 years or so. Communication, the global. Technological changes have been much more rapid than at any time in the history. Village, of humankind. As our means of communication have changed, our communication needs have changed as well. We now need to communicate with people all across the world whose language and culture may be quite different than our own. We can no longer remain locked within a society and culture that we know or grew up in. We have to engage with new ways of living and seeing and think of how best to integrate our lives into this larger world. Today, after more than a century of electric technology, we have extended our central nervous system itself in a global embrace, abolishing both space and time as far as our planet is concerned. Marshall McLuhan, Understanding Media, 1964. 2.2 A global village it was Marshall McLuhan who coined the term the global village. McLuhan who died on the last day of 1980 on December 31st has been called the most celebrated English teacher of the 20th century. This Canadian was a professor of English literature, but he was also a communications theorist and philosopher. What did he mean by the global village? McLuhan was referring to a communications explosion that is creating a wide world. Our world is known to connect by the instantaneous flow of information between any two points on the globe, however distant or remote. Events in one part of the world can be experienced from other parts as they happen in real time. So our world of experience has the immediacy of life in a village, except that our village is now the entire world. Stop for a moment and think. Have you ever watched a cricket match or a football game that was happening in some other part of the world, such as Australia, Germany, or the West Indies, live, that is, as it was happening on television? Activity 1. Ask an older person in the house if they remember a time when they waited for the next day's newspaper to find out what had happened in a game abroad. Have you ever used a cell phone to speak to your friend or relative from another country, or from a train or an airport? Activity 2. Ask the older people in your family if they remember a time when telephone calls were expensive and difficult to make, and people sent telegrams to say that. They had arrived safely, or to inform you about some urgent news, usually bad news. Check your progress 1. Communication 1, who was Marshall McLuhan? Why did he say the world is now a global village? 2.3 an arduous journey, just over a h-u-n-d-r-e-d years ago. For many of you, it may be difficult to imagine a time when a letter took three weeks to travel from India to Britain by sea. If we go back to the 19th century, we find that three weeks, 21 days, were once required for a journey from Trichinopoly, now Tirushirapalli or Tirushi in Tamil Nadu, to Vizagapatam. Now Vishakapatam in Andhra Pradesh. In 1892, the grandfather of the astrophysicist S. Chandrashekhar performed just such a journey. You may know that S. Chandrashekhar is the person who formulated the Chandrashekhar limit. That led to the discovery of neutron stars and black holes. Chandrashekhar's uncle was Sir C. V. Raman. Chandrashekhar's biographer, Kameshwa K. Wally, tells us they first had to go out of their way to gun tackle in order to take the train to Beswada Vijayawada. Then they traveled by construction train and canal boats to Rajamundri. Finally, they rode for four days in a car pulled by bullocks to reach destination. Kameshwa K. 
20, 19, 90, 42. He then tells us that that time the railroads were just being built. The very next year, Chandra's father could join them in one day. So you see how dramatically the railways have altered our world, although... Today we think of a journey by train as a slow way of traveling. Check your progress too. Once how long did it take to travel from Tiruchi, Tamil Nadu to Vijayawada? Andhra Pradesh in 1892, and why? Activity globalization of communication, the global. Find Tiruchi, Guntakal, Vijayawada, Rajamundri and Vishakapana on a map. Village of India. Find out the distances between these places. Look for a road map and a rail map of India. Find out how these places are connected. What route would you now take to go from Tiruchi to Vizag? Is it possible to take a plane now from Tiruchi to Vizag? How long would a plane journey, a journey by road, and a journey by train take? Plan a journey. From Tiruchi to Vizag, keeping in mind the time as well as the money you can. Afford to spend. 2.4 The story of human C-O-M-M-U-N-I-C-A-T-I-O-N-A-S a day in our lives. The communication facilities that we take for granted today actually represent a very recent achievement in the history of humankind. Just how recent they are. It's dramatically described by Frederick Williams in an essay, The 360 Century. They let us suppose that the cultural history of human beings begins around 360 century ago. Biologically, of course, human beings or Homo sapiens are thought to have evolved much earlier. About 200,000 years ago, spreading out of Africa 100,000 years ago. But from around 34,000 BCE to 10,000 BCE, we find Homo sapiens making the cave paintings found in France, Italy, and Spain. And in parts of India, such as Bimpeka near Bhopal. Note, BCE equals before. Common era. CE equals common era. The author of the cave paintings was Crow. Magnon, man of the Paleolithic period. These were Stone Age people, cave. Dwellers and tool makers. And it has been conventional in Western thought too. Begin the cultural history of humankind with the Crow Magnon human going back 360 centuries. Let us take these 360 centuries of our cultural existence. Then, and map them onto one day of 24 hours, let us pretend that 360 centuries can be seen as a single day in the existence of human beings. We would thus get a day in the history and evolution of communication among humans. What does this day look like? We begin our day at midnight, that is the convention, oh hours. Imagine that. The first human baby was born at midnight. From the beginning, at midnight. We have language, in the form of speech. We also have pictures, as we have already mentioned, the cave paintings of Stone Age people, drawn and used. Perhaps for magic rituals, for protection and good luck during the hunt. But we do not yet have writing. The origin of writing is commonly taken to be around a mere 5,000 years ago. So, the journey from speech to writing takes 31,000 years or 310 centuries from 360 centuries ago to 50 centuries ago. In terms of our communication day of communication 24 hours, it takes 20 hours and 40 minutes. The first human baby is now 20 hours and 40 minutes old, and it is late evening on the first day of its life. New day 12 o'clock midnight homo sapiens, language speaking 34,000 BCE. 8 a.m. K paintings. 12 o'clock noon nothing. 6 p.m. nothing. 8 p.m. Sumerians, writing 4,000 BCE. Table adapted from Williams 1982, 25. Check your progress 3. One more communication tool did we have at midnight in a day in our communication history. Two how long ago did human beings learn to capture speech and writing? Three did they draw pictures much before they learned to write? How do we know? Four where can you see the K paintings of early human beings? Five what do BCE and CE stand for? 30. What is the next great leap forward in communications? Let us say, printing. The globalization of. This happens in 600 CE in China, but in 1453 CE in the Western world, with the communication, the global Gutenberg Bible. Now let's look at our clock. It is already nearing midnight. Village. Again, it's 11.38 p.m. The telegraph appears at 11.53 p.m. in the year 1855 CE, and for the first time, as McLuhan points out, a message can travel faster than a messenger. And then, the last five minutes of the day explode with new communications. Technologies. We are on an acceleration curve of communications inventions. 11 hours, 55 minutes, and 2 seconds, the telephone, 1876 CE. 11 hours, 56 minutes, and 48 seconds, commercial radio, 1900 CE. 11 hours, 57 minutes, and 4 seconds, sound motion pictures, 1912 CE. 11 hours, 57 minutes, and 40 seconds, prototype electronic computer, 1942 CE. 11 hours, 57 minutes, and 50 seconds, neurography, 1946 CE. 11 hours, 58 minutes, and 2 seconds, color television, 1951 CE. 11 hours, 58 minutes, and 32 seconds, first commercial satellite, 1962. Williams makes the point that the greatest growth in communications. Technologies have been in our lifetimes, and it is still accelerating. This is in. Remarkable contrast to the approximately 180 lifetimes which separate the invention of writing from the invention of printing in our communications. History. Frederick Williams was writing in 1982, so many of the technologies that have evolved during your own lifetime are not mentioned by him. Notice that he does not mention the personal computer, the laptop, and the top, the internet, or the cell phone. His list of inventions perhaps looks old to you already. So, let's do the following activity. Check your progress for one to arrange the following communication technologies in their order of appearance. Radio, printed books, telephone, television, photocopy machine. Add your own technologies to this list. Try to find out the dates of their first appearance. 31. 2. Why do we say that there has been a communications explosion in the communication last hundred years or so? 3. What does it mean to say that with the invention of the telegraph for the first time, the message could travel faster than the messenger? Hint. Think of how messages were sent by the kings in history and in mythology. Were the messengers always human? 4. William says writing and printing were separated by about 180 lifetimes. How many years is each lifetime on this account? How many years separate the invention of printing in the Western world and the invention of writing? 
2.5 communication and social change communication theorists maintain the periods of human social change correlate. With changes in communication technologies, the human has remained essentially the same for unimaginable stretches of time because biologic change is evolutionary change, which takes place over millions of years. The change in communications we have seen can occur very rapidly within a single lifetime. Such communication changes have brought about social changes that seem to fundamentally alter the kinds of learning that our brains must adapt to. They also alter our perceptions of nation, society, family, and values. Can you think why this would happen? Let's take one example. B. The globalization of invention of printing made. Communication, the global. Possible a transition from village. Or alter literate societies. Before printing, most people were literate. It wasn't expected that everyone should be able to read and write because the materials in reading and writing were not available cheaply and plentifully. Books were handwritten and illustrated by hand and very precious because there were no cheap copies. It was printing that made the idea of universal literacy feasible. It was printing that led to the expectation that every human being should be able to read and write and attend school. Earlier, when the transmission of knowledge was oral, the idea of distance. Education was unimaginable. Both teacher and taught had to be physically present, and each teacher had only a few pupils. Knowledge was imparted through interaction between teacher and taught, and perhaps this is what gave rise to the Gorish issue of Ampara, or the Socratic mode of education through dialogue. Today we can return to oral education and combine it with distance education. Because of the availability of media that carry the spoken word across distances. Radio and television. When education and communication was primarily oral, there was a great emphasis on memory and speech skills. Memory was the technology that preserved information and passed it on from generation to generation in the absence of books, audio or video cassettes, CDs and DVDs. Both the grammar of Sanskrit by Panini and a dictionary of Sanskrit, the Amara Kosha, have been preserved in this way for generations by memorization. For example, this is why it was important to memorize things accurately. Speech was the medium through which information was passed on. So it was important to recite what you knew clearly and exactly. The importance of memorization in education has steadily decreased as we depend increasingly on books and reference documents and calculators and cell phones to store information such as facts and figures or phone numbers and addresses or to perform simple arithmetical calculations. The idea is that in this way we can use our mental energy in more creative ways. Certainly, the kind of globalization that we are witnessing today would not be possible without the electronic communication technologies that have been discovered just in the last half century or so. Imagine that you lived over a hundred years ago before the invention of the aeroplane in a time when telephones were still few and far between and not very efficient. If you sailed away, as some of our countrymen and women did, to a country in the South Pacific or Africa or Southeast Asia and would soon lose touch with the world and the people you have left behind. Today, however, we have people on different continents who keep in touch by chatting on the internet, which is equipped with a webcam or camera, and these people form virtual communities. These virtual communities exist for not only personal or familial reasons, for son or daughter keeping in touch with parents, spouses keeping in touch with each other, but also for business reasons, as you are perhaps well aware. The communication and formation technology industry has opened up an entire new line of work in our times, made possible by the instantaneous communication links between continents via computer and satellite. David Gradle tells us in the future of English, page 31, costs have been traditionally a major barrier to long-distance calls, but the cost of communication has lowered dramatically. The first transatlantic telephone cable laid in 1956 allowed 36 simultaneous conversations. The latest undersea fiber optic link is capable of carrying 600,000. Telecommunications technology has therefore moved towards a communication network in the shape of the internet, where a personal computer connects directly with another personal computer instead of going through a hierarchy of gatekeepers. Older. People may remember a time when all telephone calls were mediated by an operator, and for a long-distance call, whether national or international, you would talk first to the local operator who would speak with the operator at the destination, who would speak with the person you wish to talk with, so there were two mediators between you and the person you called. Today you can just dial the number and speak on. Gravel continues this shift towards a communication network rather than a hierarchy allows dispersed discourse. Communities to emerge based on shared interests such as hobbies, gardening, exotic fish, criminality, terrorism, pornography, or support ulcerative colitis. Sufferers, parents of children with Down syndrome, diasporic cultural and linguistic groups can share concerns, ideas, and decision-making as never before. The word diaspora means a spreading of people from a nation or a culture. Diasporic is its adjectival form. We often hear of the diaspora of Indians in Britain, Fiji, etc., who form a market for Hindi films. With the internet, there can be communities that are spread out but linked by a specific common interest, such as a language or a hobby. These diasporic communities are also sometimes called virtual communities that exist in a virtual reality created by the internet. Check your progress 5. One fill in the blanks. A. When education was, there was a great emphasis on memory and speech skills. B. Memory was a that preserved information and passed it on from generation to generation in the absence of books and audio or video cassettes, CDs and DVDs. C. Both A. Of Sanskrit by Panini and A. Of Sanskrit. The Amara Kosha have been preserved in this way for generations by memorization. D. The importance of memorization in education has steadily as we depend on books and reference documents. The globalization of communication, the global. E. The idea is that in this way we can use our in more village creative ways. F. When the transmission of knowledge was oral, the idea of was unimaginable. G. The invention of made possible a transition from oral to literate societies. It was printing that made the idea of feasible. H. Today we can combine oral education and distance education because 
of that carry the spoken word across distances and by people on different continents who keep in touch by on the internet with a or camera conform activity keep a diary of a day in your life noting down the communication technologies that you use you may use the technologies mentioned in this section of the guide you may also add your own technologies to this list now find someone or some people in your neighborhood who is there more than 60 years old ask them which of these technologies they use and whether they find it easy or difficult to use them what do they think about these technologies do they make life easy or do they simply lead to a waste of time note down their responses can you think of life without a photocopying machine how and in what way do you use photostat copies today what did people do for these purposes when they could make photostat copies for example we make copies of important documents like marks memos or ration cards and submit these where they required what did people do earlier play this game have you ever played this game which shows how easily a spoken message gets distorted or twisted out of shape form a circle with that at least four or five players whisper a message just once into the ear of your right hand neighbor let this person in turn whisper it to the next person and so on until the message comes back to you what was the message what is the message that comes back to you compare them the larger the circle the more fun you'll have the story goes that a general once sent a verbal message from the front lines of battle to his headquarters we are going to advance please send reinforcements the message the headquarters received was we are going to advance please send three and four pence three and four pence equals three shillings and four pence the older currency of the uk communication 2.6 language and the new technologies coming to writing today that short messaging service or sms is reshaping written english because of the time and space requirements imposed by this medium in ways that some of us find strange but we should remember that the medium has always shaped the message writing systems have arisen in response to the need of communication on the one hand and of the materials available for writing on the other thus we find parallels to the sms strategies in the story of writing of how writing began and changed to the system we know today early writing systems had a primitive writing technology the material on which they wrote and the stylus with which they wrote so it was important to them that the written message be brief and economical just as it is to the sms message writer today the semitic languages left out vowels in their writing because these were predictable from the context we now find sms messages doing the same therefore please bk for back snd for send for examples where the vowel sound has been left out or snd bk and before the invention of the alphabet which assigns sounds to symbols uniquely that is there is approximate 